Hello and welcome. Today's project is going to be recapping a Pioneer Laser Active um, NEC pack unit. The Laser Active was a laser disc player manufactured by Pioneer back in the early 90s and they sold these expansion modules that would allow it to play Sega CD and uh, uh, Turbo Graphics and PC Engine games, and, as well as a karaoke module and some other things like that. But uh, anyway, um, the everything to do with the Laser Active is rare and hard to come by, and um, they also were, especially these packs were uh, manufactured uh, using uh, SMD uh, surface mount capacitors that are uh, notorious for leaking and then. Uh, not only causing the module to malfunction, but to also cause it to, uh, the, the uh, leaked electrolyte can eat through traces on the circuit board and cause damage. So, you know, anything laser active you find kicking around, you want to uh, get it serviced and get it recapped ASAP because it's pretty much guaranteed at this point that the built-in caps are leaking and uh, could be causing damage. So anyway, let's cut to it here. I've got this laser active pack. Um, before we start, let's go ahead and drop it into the laser active real quick and just see how it's working, see if we've got any symptoms of problems so we'll know if there's anything else we need to look for while we're servicing it. So, Okay, so I've installed the module into the laser active. I went and this is the PC Engine unit, so it plays PC Engine cards. By default, it will run any region um, TurboGrafx CD, PC Engine CD games with the Hue cards are region locked. Um, I've got a controller plugged in, just a normal NEC controller. Let's go ahead and turn it on, see what happens. Got picture, got sound. Very promising so far. Go ahead and start the game here and see what we get. I just mostly want to hear the sound effects, make sure the sound effects are working. Rapid fire here, there we go. I'm trying to play this with one hand, but yeah. So this sets pretty good at first blush, just we got sound effects, we got music, picture looks pretty clean. Let's go ahead and test the CD functionality. So I'm just going to go ahead and power down, pop out the hue card, turn it back on again. I already had a uh, Gate of Thunder disc in that I loaded earlier, so let's go ahead and just hit play. Gonna skip ahead here from the little intro. Okay, so CD audio is playing through. That's good. The audio is quite a bit louder than the game is. Alright, I'm noticing the sound effects are a little quiet compared to the music. An early sign of capacitor failure is usually audio problems with these PC, PC engine units, including the duos. So. Okay, but that's good. It's nice to know we're starting with a fully functioning uh, unit. So. I don't think we'll need to look for anything to repair. We should be able to just do a straightforward recap and call it good. So I'll go ahead and move this back to the bench and open it up and we'll see what we have. Okay, so here's the board. That's Now that I've uh, taken it out of its casing. Um, you can see it's just a pretty nice, tidy, compact unit. Um, the uh, Sega packs um, usually have a secondary board attached to them, but the NEC boards are all just one nice unit like this. Um, you can see, again, like I was saying, all the surface mount caps. There is some brown discoloration I'm noticing 
right, whoops, come on focus, I asked for too much, okay, that looks better, yeah, so you see there's some discoloration kind of around the edges there, that brown, that could be leftover flux, but I think it's much more likely that that's, uh, you know, leftovers from venting uh, capacitors. Um, this whole section of the board right here is everything to do with um, audio mixing. You know, there's some these little op amps right here are responsible for taking the uh, sound output from the different channels. You know, the PC Engine has a um, music circuit, a PCM circuit, and then like a I don't know what to call it, just a chip tune circuit. And so um, those kind of all get mixed together to the CD audio, and then this chip right here is kind of the volume balancer that blends them all together. So anyway, there's a lot of caps, a lot of uh, vias, a lot of complexity in here. So fortunately, since all the sound was working on everything, I don't think we have any malfunctions. Um, if there was, we'd have to start checking continuity and uh, maybe probing the vias, and this board has very, very tiny vias, so I'm glad that it didn't seem to have any issues. So, anyway, um, I'm, let's look at a few other things here. So this, this cap right here is kind of the super cap that um, holds the uh, save data on the CD games. Um, those don't normally leak since they're through hole, but uh, we'll replace it anyway. Um, we can replace it with a larger capacity um, <laughs> Our capacity capacitor that will hold the save data longer. Um, so we'll replace that. I mean, just in general, you always want to replace all the caps as you can. There's no point in just leaving, doing a few and not the others. Let's uh, let's flip the board over. Other side's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's any caps we have to worry about. Although again, a lot of discoloration right there. That definitely looks like leftover flux. Maybe that's what it is on the other side too since there's no caps here. Well, one thing we'll do after is uh, we'll give this board a really good scrub down that I'll catch later for you to see. Yeah, there's more flux there. That actually looks hand soldered from the looks of it. I wonder wonder if maybe uh, for whatever reason NEC or Pioneer uh, was hand soldering some of the components on this. That's That is unusual to see that. So anyway, yeah, nothing. Um, oh yeah, you can see all the Hudson. Uh, you know, Hudson developed the hardware for the PC Engine, so that's all their processors there. The CPU, it's the picture processing unit, their color generator, or picture generator, that kind of stuff. And uh, really, this whole board is really just like a turbo duo, just packed down. You know, it's a lot of the same chips, a lot of the same op amp and uh, mixing setup that you would see on a turbo duo, just you know, scrunched down into a smaller board and hooked up to a, a Pioneer, uh, you know, uh, module for talking to the LaserDisc uh, unit for the data loading and audio streaming. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, um, let's talk about removing caps. Um, these SMD caps, what um, you'll hear about some people doing is taking ang angled uh, clips and uh, well, either taking pliers and twisting the caps off the board or taking snips and snipping the cans off the board. I don't like to do either of those. Um, the pads um, that hold these ca that these caps solder onto are pretty small already and when they, if any that have leaked, um, you know, that leaked electrolyte eats up into the pads and the circuit underneath and that makes the pads, um, you know, a lot easier to damage and lift off the board anyway. We want to just, you know, we want to have the least amount of stress and trauma imposed on these caps as we can to avoid damaging the traces. So um, what I prefer to use instead is I've got a, uh, a heat gun right here, or a hot air station, it would be the right way to say it. And uh, it really is just like a, you know, big blow dryer, just a lot hotter. And, uh, you know, you know, we'll... Uh, use this and use it to kind of heat up the uh, caps and then they'll just lift right off of tweezers or slide right off the pads so it's much gentler on the caps much easier way to remove them takes a little more time than snipping them off but you know the time you you know the time you gain that you give up for removing the caps of the hot air you save by not having to repair pads later so 
Alright, so what I'm going to do first before I break out the hot air station is we have some caps that are close to plastic connectors like right here and then also over here by the hue card slot those caps are close and those caps are close and we don't want the hot air gun to melt that plastic when we're running the hot air over it to uh, melt the solder on the caps so I'm going to take some Kapton tape and tape these areas off before we start applying the air and the Kapton tape will um, protect them from melting. So let me go ahead and apply that tape and get the hot air gun prepped and then I will resume from there. Okay, so I went ahead and used Kapton tape and masked off those areas around the plastic connector. Um, right there and over there and finally the long plastic connector along the back there. I probably went a little overboard. I mean, I didn't have to do this section right here because there's no caps, but you know, I'd rather uh, go the extra mile and make sure the connector is fairly taped because once plastic melts, it doesn't really go back. <laughs> Alright, so um, the other thing I'll mention is that if you don't have capped on tape, um, aluminum foil also works really well. Um, you know, just uh, you know, fold it and um, you know, tear a piece off and make that's large enough and then fit it flush against the plastic and uh, the aluminum foil will similarly uh, act like a heat barrier. And then um, I'll actually, I won't show um, removing all the caps, but um, just because there's so many of them. But um, I will, uh, in a moment here, I'll show, probably we'll start with these four down here. And I'll show you how we get those four off, and then it's the same technique for all the other uh, surface mount caps on the board. So I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I've got this uh, hot air rework station here. You want to set, um, for, for the record, this is like a $25, $30 unit off of uh, eBay or Amazon. Uh, they're very common and um, if you're going to do, honestly for what one of these pack units or if you're recapping a duo, same situation, for what one of the consoles costs, you know, it's, it's worth just spending the $25, $30 bucks to get that rework station and do the job right and save yourself a lot of trouble. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely look into picking one of these up. It will pay for itself after one job. Um, so what I do when I'm doing SMD uh, removal, cap removal, is I'll just set the, uh, uh, this is the dials up uh, how strong an airflow you get. I set it to about the middle. And then the temperature here, I set it to about 320. Um, you know, that's hot enough to melt the solder, but not so hot that it's going to be lifting pads. We don't want to use any more heat than we have to because otherwise uh, it'll start lifting pads off the board. It just kind of melts the glue that's underneath them. And as I said, all the caps are compromised already from leaking electrolytes. Well, not all the caps, but lots of them. All right, so I'm going to move this up to the, the camera up to the tripod and uh, I'll show you uh, how we work with uh, pulling a few caps off here. All right, so we got this all lined up and ready to go. Go ahead and kick on the air here. And so what you want to do is you want to hold it just, oops, my hand's blocking the frame. We can't have that. All right, so what you want to do is hold it maybe just an inch or two, you know, maybe half an inch above the caps. And you want to just keep it moving around in a slow circular pattern. You don't want to hold it over one spot for too long or you could end up just torching, you know, that pad off. But just easy motions. You want to be patient. It takes maybe a good minute or so, you know, for that, uh, for the solder to melt around each cap. So just some easy circles. Grab my pliers here. Let's see, you can kind of grab them and just give them a little twitch. Not yet, but we're getting closer. So keep moving. You know, in this case, I'm kind of working on heating up four caps at once, too. They're just in a nice little cluster here. When you're working with the individual caps out by themselves, they'll they'll be ready a lot sooner because you're not spreading your heat around to four different components. Alright, how about now? Oh, that one's just slid right off. 
There we go. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Getting closer. Okay, that one popped off. Oh, that one's off. And last but not least, there we go. So you see, we can just repeat that same process for all the other caps on the board. And you can see it doesn't take very long, minimal stress to the pads underneath. But speaking of those pads, let me go ahead and cut for a second. Let's take a closer look at how things look under those caps that we just took off. Alright, so zooming in here, you, you can see it's really obvious. All four of those caps vented out from the bottom. That uh, dark discoloration you see is the electrolytics fluid that was inside each cap that uh, when the cap aged it just kind of opened up on the bottom and let all of the electrolytic guts pour out. Um, that's just Electrolytic acid is corrosive, it will eat away at the traces, it will cause short circuits and malfunctions on the board. So uh, one thing we're going to do before putting everything back together is we're going to um, clean off um, the uh, old pads as thoroughly as we can. We don't want to leave, you know, we don't want to just put new caps on without cleaning everything up first or else that corrosion will remain and keep eating away. Um, in fact, if you look at the uh, where are they? Here they are. I, do, I think it will show up here. You can even see on the bottoms of the caps. Whoops. Yeah, you can see uh, they're kind of wet on the bottom and kind of gross. So, yeah, that's, you know, those little uh, plastic uh, bases, you know, they kind of kind of act like little cups and hold <laughs> that electrolytics until it starts spilling over the edges or leaking between the legs. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty disgusting and it can just eat holes in your electronics and, you know, we definitely got to get all of these serviced, you know, as soon as you can, you know, don't, don't wait, don't, you know, <laughs> just, if you have one of these, any C, any, anything any C, Turbo Duo, PC Engine Duo, uh, the uh, Turbo Express, uh, G, Turbo, G, or PC Engine GT handhelds, they all use these uh, surface mount caps that leak, and you know, after 30 years, they're all leaking. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the rest of these caps off camera, and then once I've done that, we'll talk about um, how best to go about cleaning things up and uh, getting ready for the uh, replacement caps to go on. All right, so I finished removing all the surface mount caps, and let's have a look you can see that especially over here in this audio section all those small caps almost all of them just were leaking out and just pouring corrosive guts all over the board you can see all that discoloration under the pads over here and uh, that one right there in the center that one whoops auto focus is not cooperating with me here Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that center pad, I mean, that one, that was a larger cap. That came off pretty clean, and then there was two others here in the corner. Those came off pretty clean, but just about every other cap on the unit was compromised and leaking. So, you know, just because... It seems to be working, you know, you saw when we tested this unit at the start of the video, I mean, the sound worked, you could play games, by all appearances it was working, um, you know, but you can still have a nightmare brewing, you know, under the, just inside the casing, so with any of these NEC units, you know, don't, you know, don't wait for malfunctions to happen, just, if you have one now and it hasn't been recapped, get it recapped, period. You know, it's after this many years, it's pretty much a guarantee that they're leaking, and if you're not having problems yet, they will be soon. Alright, so, um, we do want to get this cleaned up before we start getting ready to put new caps on, but there is one cap left we need to tackle, and that's this super cap right here that is responsible for holding the save game data. 
Uh, this is the only through hole cap on the board, so we're going to have to flip the board over and um, we'll use a, uh, you can either use a handheld like plunger soldering pump, which is like $10. Um, that's fine if you're just doing a cap here and there like this would be. Um, when you start working with through hole caps a lot, you probably want to invest in a full blown um, solder, uh, solder sucking uh, station. Um, I know uh, Ayanye make, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, they, uh, they make an all-in-one station that I guess is pretty good. Um, I have the Hakko FR300, which is a really good unit. It costs a little bit more, but again, if you're going to do this kind of work a lot, um, the right tools make all the difference. So, anyway, I'm going to cut here. Um, we'll flip the board over, um, and uh, we'll talk about how best to uh, you know, get that supercapacitor removed. Okay, so I flipped the board over, and we've got the, uh, uh, right here, this little rectangle is the two points that are the back side of the supercapacitor that we're going to be removing, the through-hole supercapacitor. Um, as I said, uh, we just need to remove the solder from these two joints. You can do that um, with either just a handheld um, suction pump, or you can use a more, uh, uh, an actual uh, solder sucking, or solder removal station which uh, will heat the joint and uh, you can use a vacuum to remove the solder simultaneously. But before we go applying the uh, suction gun to it, um, let's go ahead and add some fresh solder um, just because this old solder um, will heat up more easily and remove from the uh, vias, the through holes, more easily if we've got new solder added into it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of flux here like that. And then get my iron ready and just tin up the tip right here. There we go. And now we'll just go ahead and add a little bit right there. And honestly, it doesn't matter too much if it flops up severely or anything because it's all going to get removed anyway, but in this case it didn't glop up and that looks pretty good. So now I'll go ahead and get the Hacko gun here. There's the end of it. Make sure where it's ready. And then I'm just going to kind of hold that on there. Kind of give it just a second to melt the solder all the way through and then that up and then the same thing for the other joint. Whoops. There we go. Hold it there for a second. This one looks like it could use a little bit more removal, so let's hit it one more time. Hold that on there and okay. Now, let me go ahead and cut and we'll zoom out and I'll show uh, taking the uh, supercapacitor off. Okay, so this left hand joint cleaned out nicely, but the right hand joint uh, still has some melted solder going through. Or, not melted, sorry, it has some solder that didn't clear properly that's still in the through hole. So, we're just going to go ahead and repeat the process, add some flux. Add some more fresh solder. Try to get good coverage on the joint here. There we go. And we'll go ahead and grab the Hako again. Play that to the joint. Give it a second. There we go. Now it's nice and clear. Okay, let me move the camera so we can get a good look at it. Okay, I was tried to catch this on camera, but I just wasn't able to find an easy way to do it. So um, after I cleared the holes, the uh, component was still had you know the legs were sticking to the uh, edges of the vias just enough to stop the super cap from dropping out easily. So what I did was I lifted up the board slightly, put a finger on the super cap. And then with my other hand, took uh, the dr kind of the dry edge of the uh, soldering iron tip and uh, heated up the legs while applying just a little bit of wiggle force onto the super cap. 
enough so that it would um, the leg would pop loose from um, the side of the through hole. So you can see now when I wiggle the super cap, you can see the legs wiggling around, and that's because now they've been freed from the edges of the vias. So now I can go ahead and kind of work it out like that. And there we go. No more super cap on the board. Let's move on. All right, before we start installing new caps, we've got to clean off that residual um, electrolytic fluid that dumped out from the old caps and is just, you know, slowly eating away at the, um, at the solder mask and the circuitry here on the board. So uh, what I like to do is uh, get a uh, toothbrush and um, some, uh, you know, isopropyl alcohol. That's what's inside here. And then I'm just going to slowly start scrubbing away. And you can see as I scrub, you can see that um, electrolytic fluid just clean gets lifted right off those pads. And I'm not scratching very hard, I'm just going very light, very gentle. You want to stop and get fresh alcohol frequently to keep the brush clean. It's nice and gentle. I'm going to just work across the entire board this way, just scrubbing away that leaked electrolytic fluid and uh, any other leftover flux from the factory. I'll show the other side too because there was some, uh, a lot of leftover flux on the other side for whatever reason. <laughs> the board's twitching around on me. This is, I might end up moving the camera to the tripod just so I can have both hands free for doing this. You see, I'm not, I'm not bearing down. I'm not using any excessive force. You don't want to just really light surface brushing. It's more about letting the alcohol set in and do the work than it is, you know, bearing down and using force to remove things. What I like to do is I'll go over the entire board like this and then uh, so what I like to do is I'll go over the entire board like this and then I'll use a clean dry toothbrush and use that to kind of buff the board clean after I've gone over the whole thing with alcohol. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut for just a moment here so I can better support the board with two hands. I think you get the idea. I'll come back uh, when I'm going over on the other side to clean things up over there. Be right back. So something I just noticed while I was cleaning is that during the uh, capacitor removal process, I managed to displace uh, two surface mat capacitors. You can see right there. C60, that little uh, ceramic surface mount cap popped out of place. And then same thing with this one up here. So, uh, oh yeah, and then another one right here to the left of that op amp. Hmm. Well, I try to be really careful when removing the caps, but you know, when you heat up everything in the surrounding area, sometimes you end up uh, displacing, um, you know, other surface mount parts along the way. Fortunately, you know, nothing's damaged. Um, we can easily just uh, move them back into place again, hold them with tweezers, heat up the pads on either side, and that'll uh, lock them back into where they're supposed to be. So right now I just got to make sure I don't, uh, you know, knock them off the board or displace them uh, during the cleaning process. So, All right, so I just finished going over the entire board um, twice, once with, um, we'll call it the wet uh, toothbrush, uh, we're rubbing alcohol where we, uh, as you saw, we just kind of scrubbed everything down, 
lifted off all that uh, surface electrolytic uh, discoloration. And then um, after I gave everything a good scrub that way, I went back with a dry toothbrush and gave everything a uh, kind of a buffing pass. And as you can see, it's just night and day difference. These pads are now just looking really shiny, um, you know, really clean. Um, we are still going to clean all the pads up anyway before we apply uh, uh, new caps and uh, new solder. But um, as far as uh, just cleaning up what was there, it's it's just night and day. Uh, still going to have to, uh, you can see over there on the right, that uh, cap that moved out of place, that little ceramic cap, and so we're still going to have to fix that. But yeah, this, this cleaned up really well, and I'm really, really happy to see that there's no lifted pads, um, no missing solder mask, you know. Even though all the caps have lifted, um, I think we got to them in time um, with this board that it didn't cause any uh, damage. And, you know, a good sign that there wasn't any circuitry damage, too, is that uh, it was fully functional when we started, so... Alright, so now here's the back side of the board after I've finished uh, scrubbing it down with uh, an alcohol toothbrush and then doing a second pass with a dry, clean toothbrush to buff it. And again, as you can see, it just looks so much better with all that nasty, uh, caked up uh, electrolytic sludge. Or, sorry, that wasn't electrolytic in this case. It was uh, uh, leftover flux from the factory. But yeah, it just looks so much better without that leftover flux, you know, just that. It's really a pity they don't ship them that way, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so, let's go ahead and go back over to the front side of the board. And now let's start getting ready to um, put new capacitors on. So, there's still some solder left on each of the pads from the caps that were installed at the factory. In one case, uh, let me see if I can find it on camera here. Oh, I'm looking at it upside down. <laughs> it's over here. Um, yeah, you can see that it left the uh, feet. Right. Hmm? Yeah, right. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. I think so, right there just above the tape. Uh, that pad, uh, it actually left the feet of the uh, cap behind uh, when I lifted it off just because the whole bottom of the cap had rotted out at that point. So the, the cap came up, but the feet stayed behind. Oh yeah, there's another one right there. So, um, so what we're going to do with all of these is um, we're going to clean them off and we want to clean each pad, get as much of that original solder off of them as we can. Um, one reason that we want to do that is just so we're starting fresh. We want fresh, brand new solder on as many of the joints as we can. And also because um, the uh, even though we've scrubbed the surface clean, that corrosive um, electrolytic still could have uh, soaked down into the uh, old solder a bit. And uh, we just, anything we can to get rid of that um, old electrolytic we want to do. So, um, so for pulling that, um, cleaning those old pads, you can either use a solder braid. Um, I've got a little bit of that here. Maybe I'll see if I can demonstrate that technique. Um, but again, if you have a uh, solder sucking gun, like uh, the Hakko FR300 that I have, it's much easier because you can zoom in here. Just kind of touch it down onto the pad for a second. And see, just like that, it cleans them up, you know. So let's hit a few more just for demonstration here. So that one. Whoops. Here we go. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, you know, it's a little rough of me. I'm I'm using my off hand. <laughs> I'm right handed. I'm using the left gun to run the soldering sucker. So uh, maybe not the best example of my technique, but you can see. Uh, that it just cleans, you know, that old solder right off of them. So, anyway, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run around the board and um, clean the old solder off all these real quick off camera, and then I'll be back. Okay, so when I was going around cleaning pads, um, I wanted to point out something with these pads here on the lower right corner of the board. Um, you see they kind of have this blotchy, discolored look to them. 
these pads are actually corroded, the uh, electrolytic kind of uh, ate away at the surface of the solder. And, um, you know, scrubbing it with a toothbrush wasn't enough to uh, dislodge that surface coloration. So we got to do a little bit more to get these ones cleaned up. Um, so what I like to use for these kinds of things is a fiberglass uh, pencil. Um, just some light rubbing with the fiberglass will clean those off. You want to be careful with it though because the fiberglass will scratch off the solder mask and uh, start getting you know down in the circuits underneath so it's definitely it works well but it's you know a good light use tool so I'm gonna see if I can get this on camera basically I'm just gonna do a little bit of scratch in here again nothing not bearing down not using a lot of force just a little bit of light rubbing here. You'll see little bits of fiberglass shards come off of there. Those hurt like hell if you get in your fingers, so make sure uh, you scrub the board down right after you use this. All right, let's let's see how that looks. So it's a bit better. You can see they're shinier than they were, but they still could probably use a little bit more here. Let me grab my toothbrush and uh, let's clean them up one more time with the alcohol here. Let's see. Let's see how it looks after I scrub it again. Okay, yeah, so all the pads, I think, except maybe that lower right one, look quite a bit better. That lower right one, I think, needs just a little bit more scrubbing. Um, I don't want to do it on camera because I want to be precise, but, um, but yeah, you get the idea. Some This board is surprisingly that um, I haven't had very many of these uh, pads to clean up given how much uh, the caps had leaked. I've seen other boards, especially on uh, duos. PC Engine duos where you know a lot of the pads can have corrosion and then I've used up you know had to use do quite a bit of fiberglass scrubbing so again another inexpensive tool it's a good thing to have in your uh, you know uh, console rework toolbox so let me go ahead and scrub this up a little bit more and I'll finish cleaning the pads and be right back so I just wanted to show a quick glimpse that uh, now that I've uh, cleaned it up that corrosion with the fiberglass pencil and then uh, uh, you know, clean the pads with the eraser, you know, now everything's shiny and clean the way that it should be, just the way we want it, so. Alright, so now I've got the board clean, I've got all the pads clean. Um, normally we would be ready to start uh, putting fresh capacitors on, but as I said earlier, when I was removing uh, the capacitors, I accidentally shifted uh, three uh, surface mount caps. You can see one of them right here, and so I need to get them back into place. Um, honestly, it's such small detail work, there's just not no way I'm going to be able to catch it on camera. Um, you know, I just don't quite have the right type of tripod set up for it. So I'll just have to uh, kind of talk you through how you would do it, and then I'll show you how it looks afterwards. So um, it's very simple, you would just kind of use a pair of tweezers to uh, grab onto that uh, cap. And you see it's kind of held cockeyed at an angle right now. Um, it's still you know, partly secured in place. So with uh, using tweezers in one hand to hold it steady, and then uh, you use the soldering iron in the other hand, and you're just going to just lightly tap on that joint where it's still connected to kind of uh, free it. And then once the cap is loose, you can kind of position it equidistant between the two... Um, uh, solder pads there and then just use a very very light brush of the uh, soldering iron uh, while uh, holding the cap with your tweezers to uh, tack it back into place again. Um, I will say that having a steady hand helps and um, I would also strongly recommend using magnification. I'm using a, uh, a microscope here. I've got this 
Um, you know, you can use a magnifying glass, you can use, um, but I, I know some people, or I've seen some people kind of brag about not, you know, using magnification, but I've found when doing any SMD work, both the caps and those uh, resistors, that not only does, I mean, get, if you get used to using a microscope, it's so much easier. You know, you can just really see what you're doing. You're not having to strain your eyes. It's a lot less frustrating. And you can also verify that you're making nice, high quality solder joints that way, you know. Um, it's, I really can't recommend it enough. And, you know, this microscope is perfect for this kind of work and it was less than uh, $200 off Amazon. I think it was like $175 or something like that. So again, if you're going to do very much of this work, if you're only going to do it once in a while, maybe just get a magnifying glass or you can get, um, there's a visor you can get for like 10 bucks that, um, you know, that you can use to help with your eyes. But if you're going to do this a lot, oh man, my microscope is seriously one of the most useful tools I have. Like, I, I when I'm doing this kind of SMD work a lot, I live under the microscope, so. Okay, anyway, so now that I've talked that through, I'm going to go ahead and fix these uh, three caps and then be right back to you. All right, so I've got the three displaced components back into place. There is uh, the one uh, surface mount cap right there, C604, is back in place. And then that resistor, R397. And then lastly, there is one more cap right there, C357. All right, so when you start doing a lot of work with consoles and recapping, one site you're going to hear come up a lot is Console 5. Console 5 is an excellent resource um, for multiple reasons. One is that they've got this wiki article with uh, user-submitted um, diagrams and cap lists. So you can see somebody already made this excellent diagram of um, you know this NEC uh, laser active pack unit where you can see not only each of the caps but you see that little uh, line on each circle points to the negative side of the cap so you know caps are polarized so when you're putting them on there there's going to be a little uh, black stripe on top of the capacitor can and you want that canned that stripe to be pointed um, in the same direction as the stripe um, as the line on these little circles here. So anyway, so there's a list of all the caps, their positions, and which way they should be oriented. And then over here on the left hand side they list um, you know the resistance and voltage capacity for each cap. And these boards, um, you know, they use about four different types of caps it looks like. Mostly 10 UFs, a couple 100 UFs, a couple 22 UFs. And um, you can uh, buy those as a complete kit um, directly from uh, Console 5. They'll just send you a kit with all the caps ready to go. And, um, and uh, you know, they use high quality caps. Um, you can get either the, uh, a kit that's surface mount caps, like the ones that come from the factory. That's what I recommend you use, um, just because that's what the pads are designed for. Um, but um, you can also buy a kit from them that uses through-hole uh, capacitors and you can make those work but you have to kind of clip off the legs and uh, honestly it just looks a lot messy, a lot messier. So, uh, you know, SMD takes a little bit more practice to uh, learn how to solder but again, as long as you have a steady hand and you're careful, um, you know, I, I do recommend going the SMD cap route when you can. So, um, so yes, definitely get used to Console 5. Please support them. They, you know, they do, they're a huge asset to uh, the, you know, community when it comes to keeping these uh, retro consoles going. So the other thing I want to mention with caps is, um, you know, you, there is some talk online about moving away from these electrolytic caps that have, you know, the fluid that can leak out over time and damage circuitry to something like uh, either ceramic or uh, tantalum caps. Um, you know, I've read a lot of pros and cons. I know some other modders and repair people swear by, especially the ceramic caps. My take on it personally is, you know, if, if ceramic caps were the right ones to use in the design, that's what they would have used in the first place. Um, the electrolytic caps also um, handle uh, ripple better. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'm not going to get into the very specifics on it, but my take on it is that um, if you 
you know, use fresh brand new electrolytic caps. You use a high-end quality brand like uh, Panasonic, Rubicon, um, you know, the ones that Console 5 sells, then, um, you know, there's no reason that this board should, you know, be good for another 40 or 50 years with fresh caps. So, and, you know, if you care about your equipment, hopefully you'll check on it another 30 years anyway and make sure everything still works okay. So, so yeah, long story short, use SMD caps if you're good enough with soldering iron. Through-hole caps are all right if you're not quite that savvy. Either way, it's fresh caps, so that's okay, but please stick to the electrolytics. You know, not a fan of the ceramics or tantalums until somebody, you know, convinces me otherwise. You know, like I said, it's just, it's what they used before, and the electrolytic caps that you can buy today are a higher quality than what they shipped on these NEC, NEC boards years ago. Okay, so that's my quick rant about capacitors. Let's go ahead and I will demonstrate um, actually, you know, soldering a cap into place and then, uh, so let's pick up there. Alright, so to demonstrate soldering uh, one of these SMD caps into place, I wanted to pick one that was kind of uh, out in the middle by itself. So this right here is C401. It's kind of smack dab in the center of the board. Looking at my console 5 capacitor map, uh, you can see it's C401 is a 100 microfarad, a 6 volt cap, and with the uh, negative side, the black stripe on the can, pointing to the left. So that's what we've got here. And so um, what we want to do is just go ahead and, whoops, I bumped the camera. There we go, bump the board. I'm just going to go ahead and drop some flux on it here. And then take my soldering iron tip, load up the end of it, here a little bit of fresh solder, kind of hold, hold the cap steady with the tweezers. Just tack that side into place like that. Whoop. A little bit of Let's put a little bit of thin layer of fresh solder down on the pad. It's like, there we go. A little bit more. Just need something for it to hold on to. Okay, that should be better. So I'll put that on, and that side's in place. Get a little bit more fresh solder on the tip here. Touch on that side. And now that side's into place. And that's really all there is to it. You see if we give it a little test wiggle here, you know, it's not going anywhere. And, uh, you know, like I said, normally I use the microscope, so I will uh, look at this under the microscope and make sure that both sides really are a good clean joint. I recommend you do the same using some kind of magnification and light. But yeah, I mean, that's really all there is, is just prepare your pads with a thin layer of fresh solder, set it into place, tack down one side, tack down the other side, and you're golden. Um, about the only other obstacle you maybe need to be careful of is when you have a tight grouping of caps to install, like in the audio section over here on this right side. Um, you want to just start in the middle, put fresh your new caps in the middle, and then work your way outwards, because uh, you want to make sure that you have enough room to get your soldering iron tip in there and if you start with the outer caps then the cans are going to get in the way when you're trying to uh, work with those uh, other caps in the middle so start in the middle work your way out but um, otherwise yeah it's, just, it's, it's pretty straightforward I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start playing in the rest of these caps and I'll be back to you in a moment alright so I finished going around the board and replacing all the capacitors I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, you know, there was a few pads I had to scrub some corrosion off of, but for the most part, this was a really clean board. I'm really glad that there wasn't much uh, circuit damage and no lifted pads. I mean, this went about as cleanly as a uh, one of these boards can get. Now, the only thing I haven't swapped yet is the uh, um, the super capacitor that holds the save games. Um, I thought I could try to catch that on camera, so you can see there's the spot for it right here. This is the replacement super cap that I got from console 5. 
And so, just got to uh, get it at an angle here and uh, push those pins through. Now what I'm going to do is hold it through and flip the board over to the other side. And we can see the pins poking out for it right there. Oh, and I should have mentioned I made sure that the uh, negative side uh, matched what was marked on the board. You can see that thicker line um, there at the top marks the negative, and it also matches the diagram um, on the console 5 wiki. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and see if we can do this on camera here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some flux. Okay, so I loaded up the tip of my soldering iron with uh, solder. And so with this, now that it's been fluxed up, I'm just going to come in, tack that in. Now what I'm going to want to do, it's going to take two hands. Oh, there we go. So that one, that nicely. This one, I'll probably have to add some more solder, which I'll need another hand for, but basically you can see how that one went on. So next I would just take a little bit more solder here, and then while uh, holding the soldering iron against it, you want to heat up both the pin and the pad and melt you know, make sure your solder forms a nice bridge uh, between the two of them. Um, Alright, so I'm going to touch that up off camera. Be right back. Alright, so that's our final board after the complete recap. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it one last time. I did use um, no clean flux when working on this. Nevertheless, it's still a good idea to uh, go ahead and do one more pass anyway to just scrub away any remaining uh, flux left over, solder left over, that kind of stuff. Just so that the board's clean as it can be before putting it back together. So I take a uh, isopropyl toothbrush, scrub it down lightly, then take a dry toothbrush, do a buffing pass. Um, I think when after the cut here we'll uh, put it back together and uh, try it out and see if everything works properly. Okay, so I have the pack unit recapped and reinstalled back into the uh, laser active. Let's go ahead and put in our hue card again. And power on. Let's see what we get. Hmm, white screen. Okay, let's see. Let's try that one more time. Oh, there we go. Card just must not have been seated quite right the first time. Alright, we got picture, we got sound. It's looking good. Alright, let's see if I can. Whoops, let's see if I can play this one handed here. Yep, all the controller directions are working. I can pause. I can reset the game so select works. Alright, let's go ahead and see how the CD functionality is. So go ahead and turn it off. Unplug the hue card. Power on again. That's our startup screen. I've already got Gate of Thunder in there. Let's go straight into Gate of Thunder here. Gate of Thunder! Alright, so we got CD audio. Let's skip to the title screen. Okay, that's normal since we removed the uh, supercapacitor. We'll have to format the memory again. Oh, 
just gotta make sure we get all of our sound effects here. Yep. Actually, the volume sounds a lot more balanced than before the recap. Before the recap, you can barely hear the, uh, does it sound a little weird? Whoops. Oh, wait, this is hard to play on here, dude. Good test, so we'll call this one good and we'll see you in the next project.